All right, guys. Hope everybody's doing well since the last time we talked. So uh, this video is to walk you guys through using the OctaSolve software for Problem Set 5 as well as future problem sets. So the first thing, let's just look at, at the test you guys um, or the, the stuff you guys are reprocessing. So this is the data that you will be using here. We gave you all the relevant information. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to put that in. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over here to OctaSolve. Uh, once that opens, you're going to want to go over to the file, new. This is going to be pumping test data. So just select the pumping test wizard, press OK. So we are using uh, an observation well. That is what your data is right here. This is data um, from the observation well. So this is the times of drawdown. So it didn't have any drawdown. And then this is, uh, notice it's also in depth to water. So you're gonna wanna change that to drawdown in an Excel file. I'll show you the data that we're working with real quick. So mine's already in drawdown here. Uh, this is the pumping well. It's the drawdown in the pumping well, and this is the drawdown in our test well. And then this is the time. So if you guys just want to make a column like that and then convert it to drawdown, just like we did in that uh, in-class exercise the other day. Cool, so let's go back to OctaSolve. So this is a multi-well test. You're gonna press OK. Let's begin the wizard. So here's where you choose your length units. Mine are still gonna be in feet and minutes. Uh, my pumping rate was in gallons per minute, feet per day. I'm gonna keep it nice and American. Y'all have to change it to uh, meters, minutes, and then this pumping rate is in meters cubed per minutes. But it's really nice um, that you could just have this kind of unit setup page. So you're just gonna press next. I already entered this in, uh, but you can enter in whatever information you want and yeah, not too important for this, but when you guys, uh, if you guys go into consulting or anything like that, this is gonna be really important to keep track of your stuff. So here's where you enter, uh, since we're working with a confined aquifer, it's just the thickness of the aquifer. So B is from the confining unit at the aquifer base to the top. So it's just the thickness of the confined unit. So y'all are gonna have a different number for this, but mine is 60 feet. We're, we aren't going to need any uh, solutions that solve for uh, directional anisotropy. <laughs> anisotropy, sorry. Uh, yeah, we're not going to solve for that. So just leave it at one. Uh, so this is the pumping well. So I'm just going to call it PW1. I'm just going to leave it at the origin. Not really that important. Uh, we're not in like a, this software is not working in a geographic coordinate system or anything like that. So. That's cool. And then just make sure that it's under vert vertical full penetration here. Uh, that's one of the assumptions we're making. So if you guys look in here, it says assume fully penetrating and all the other of your test assumptions. So we're gonna leave a lot of the stuff just as is. And then make sure it's in the pumped aquifer unit. This, you could just leave the same. So here is where you type in your pumping rate. So time zero, pumping rate starts. So you notice there could be variable uh, pumping here, but we're just gonna, it's a constant pumping test. So uh, my rate is 300 gallons per minute. The all is gonna be something different. So just make sure to use the one on the problem set. And then this is gonna be the monitoring well here. So I'm gonna call it test well. 108 and then here's where you work out your uh, your radius so you guys notice up here we've provided a radius of 260 meters there so that is what you're going to put in the x direction here uh, and make sure that it's in the right units and everything but mine was just three feet 
Cool. Once again, full penetration and it's within the same pumped aquifer. All right, leave that the same. So here's where things, gets, uh, things get a little tricky. So you're gonna have your Excel sheet where you go from uh, depth to water, convert that to drawdown. Remember the depth of water was 12, so just similar to what we did in the ICE. For me, what I had to do uh, was just copy and paste this over into a new sheet. So I didn't, uh, this is the time, the elapsed time, this is the drawdown. And in order to bring this over, in order to import this file, you're gonna need to save it as a comma separated file. So we're just gonna go to save as this PC um, and then this Excel workbook, just switch over to, let's do comma delimited, save. And then notice that it says uh, to save only the active sheet, click OK. So that's why I just created a new sheet with these two columns. The only two columns I want to import are the elapsed time and the monitoring while drawdown, which is the only things we gave you guys, except that you're, um, you're going to have to convert that drawdown. So just make a new sheet, copy and paste just those two columns in there. And then you can come over here, import. You can browse to wherever your location is. Octosol practice, and that's that CSV. Open that. Um, really important, almost forgot. So it's not gonna let you do this. This could be a holdup for people. It's not gonna let you go next until you exit out of this thing. So then you can go next then here's where you just make sure that your data is going to be in the proper columns. This uh, elapsed time is in the first column, which it was. Displacement is in the second column. And then I'm starting at row one, just because I didn't have any headers there. I just copied and pasted the numbers in. But if you guys did have uh, headings, you would just want to change this over to two. So just make sure it's all looking good. You could apply weights. Uh, or if you had a date column, you could put that in there too, but we're just gonna keep it nice and simple. So boom. Then uh, this is to kind of transform, like if you had an, uh, you know, a, a timer issue or something like that, you could just apply those here, but we're not gonna need to do any of that. So boom, you got your data right there. It would be, Good idea to just run through and check to make sure all these numbers are right. Uh, I've already done that previously and these all look good. It goes to 7,200 right there, which is 120 hours. And you just go next, finish, imported. So now you got all your data to work with already loaded up. This is the, there's an error window here. No errors detected. If you did get some detected errors, you can go over here and edit uh, anything. So you could change your units. They're not working out. The aquifer data was messed up or something like that you could go back and alter that um, so this edit drop down is just where you can change your stuff you could add wells um, add a new well if you want yeah that's that and then here's a bunch of stuff that you can do with this data we're just going to be for your problem set you're just going to be performing a curve matching here and then this is your summary list so you can if you notice here out of the report from Octosolve. So that's one of the things that you're going to be, I mean, you could use a, a snipping tool or whatever, but this is, this is your report. So snipping tool or yeah, that's probably the best. Uh, and then bring that PNG over to a Word doc and then make sure it's going to be a PDF after that. So cool. Now we're going to go in <clears throat> We're going to look at our displacement versus time graph. So this is what the data looks like. If you guys notice, uh, well, there's displacement on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. Uh, you'll notice that this is in linear log scale. So you have a log scale here at the bottom that you guys are used to now and linear scale over here. So to change that, you can just right click on the graph, click log. Now it's in log log space. <clears throat> So the next thing you're going to do, um, what you're going to do for your problem set, it's just going to go into match. 
solution. And here's where you're going to pick your uh, what solution you want to fit your data to. So the first thing you have to do is make sure this is unchecked. So solution is inactive is unchecked. And then since we're working with a confined aquifer, we're going to go in there and we're working with Tice. If you want to look at the different stuff you can do with it, it's right here. You've got the sources. Um, these are all the, the different variations we could have in here. But for right now, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. Go with the Tice. Click OK. Notice a line is fit there. Um, and then if you go into automatic, this is where you can estimate some stuff. So these are just uh, the, the modeling parameters here. And then if you notice here, so remember once again, the only thing that we're predicting, just like we did in our in-class exercise, is transmissivity and storativity. So those are the only things that are estimated by this feature. Uh, this guy is not going to be, and then B is just constant <clears throat> in this confined aquifer system. Uh, then these, yeah, this is a, a cool one too. This can, you can choose the window of time here. We won't do that for now. Maybe we'll come back and do that. And yeah, everything looks good. So we're just gonna go ahead and estimate that. And then it shows you what it estimated it as. You notice it's not the best fit. Um, this is just a, a practice exercise. I can go in here and tweak some more, but I'm just showing you guys how to do your things. Whatever it estimates for you, um, that's what you should use. And then we also ask you to do a visual fit. So you could either go over here to match visual, or there's these quick toolbars. So we can match automatic there or match visual right here. And then you can left click on the line and just drag it wherever you want to fit. And that's that. And so these parameters just changed a bit. So let's go back into this match automatic real quick and just show you say like you don't want to fit the end part of your data. You just want to fit the middle. So with this window here, you can go from zero to let's just say let's do eight hours for right now. See how that kind of matches that front part a little better. You could match it even better if we just did a couple hours. Um, so that's one thing uh, you can do. You don't have to do it for this problem set, but that's just walking you through some, some of the stuff you could do with this. You can also go into the toolbox, and this is where you can manually tweak your parameters. So let's say with storativity, we're going to bring that around so you notice can change so that slope the line at the beginning is changing with the store activity changing just like we did with the excel but you don't have to do it manually that looks a little low still it's not letting me go any higher so i'm just going to go in here to the parameters bar apply that and go back tweak this guy a bit now you have a much better fit at least for that first part of the data. Let's change this to 0.4. You get the point. Yeah. So you can play around with that, um, play around with this. <clears throat> Again, this is a super useful software. Uh, if you're going into environmental consulting and you ever do any aquifer testing, this has kind of been um, the leading software for people that, that do aquifer tests for a long time.